I come home, I'm in the circuit at a thousand feet, and all of a sudden I have no control. My controls are frozen completely, and I didn't say a word to the crew, the crew were with me, and uh, I'm just flying along and pulling, and, and all of a sudden it broke loose. And so I knew that the icing had slipped along the fuselage and dropped into the crack at the back of the empennage and, and locked it. And as soon as I was in the temperature that was melting, it popped out of there. And I never told, I never told the crew about that escapade. I was absolutely, I, I was very, uh, very, uh, very scared because, you know, what the hell, I had no control of this damn thing. And I impressed my instructor for some reason, even though I did some stupid things. I impressed him with my night flying and also the fact when I could do precautionary landings. I you, you just hang that airplane on its props before and then take off again. But just practice and he'd watch me do this. And my other, a lot of my other fellow students say, they thought it was crazy because it, you're, that thing's going to stall on you. But anyway, <laughs> you impressed my instructor. And then when I had my final test, after I'd done some stupid things, well, they better give, give this guy some uh, stupid uh, test. So I went up with this instructor and he put me into this very awkward position with the hood on and, and in a stall. And I brought the thing out of the stall like nothing. And with the hood, you know, you couldn't see anything, just the, by feel, just luck, and, or skill, I suppose. And he was so impressed, I got my wings. And I'm so happy that this documentary is being made because it's going to be dedicated to not just those four people, but to all of the people who were killed during their training period in World War II, while training under the Commonwealth Air Training Plan. And I'm happy.